Hello everyone, in this session we are going to dive into the inventory cost flow methods such as first in first out BIFO, last in first out LIFO, the weighted average method specific, the moving weighted average method, and the specific identification method. These are different ways of tracking inventory. Now companies are allowed to use any of these methods for accounting purposes. Nevertheless, they may use a completely different method for their actual inventory movement. For example, a company could use FIFO for actual flow of inventory first and first out, then LIFO to record this activity. That's perfectly fine. One for accounting purposes, one what's actually happening. We will discuss why company would use one method over the other advantages versus disadvantages. I will also show you a visual representation for FIFO and LIFO. You, see, you can take a look. Maybe you'll even have a laugh or it'll put a smile on your face. Then we will walk in this session over a complete example illustrating these concepts. But before we begin, I want to go back and revisit the matching principle. Because perpetual inventory is a classic use when you're using perpetual inventory method is a classic use of the matching principle we sell an item we match the cost with that sale so i will start with that then we will illustrate fifo lifo the weighted average specific identification specifically the fifo and the lifo would be the moving fifo moving lifo it means continuously updated let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. I am going to start the session by revisiting the matching principle. And when it comes to ending inventory and cost of goods sold, the matching principle is a classic example. What do I mean by this? The matching principle requires that the cost of goods sold is recorded in the same period as the sales revenue that those goods help generate. So when we buy inventory, when we buy goods to sell, first it's an asset, it's recorded as an asset, then it's expense when sold. It means we expense it as we make the sale. So the inventory becomes, the inventory becomes an expense. The asset becomes an expense, so the inventory becomes cost of goods sold. This means if a company sells inventory during the current period, the cost of the inventory should be recognized as an expense through cost of goods sold in the same period. So that's the first concept I want you to have in mind before we dive deeper into this session. The other concept that's very important that you need to understand today and for the future. So I'm going to be spending maybe at least, I would say, five minutes on this slide. Very important concept. Please listen and listen to me carefully. I am going to examine the relationship between ending inventory, which is an asset, and cost of goods sold, which is an expense. And I already told you, ending inventory becomes cost of goods sold, an expense, once we sell the asset. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work I'm going to work a simple example that illustrate this relationship. So I'm going to be assuming I'm going to be selling calculators and I'm going to be selling these calculators. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume I'm going to be purchased. I'm going to be purchasing each calculator for a dollar. So I'm in the business of selling calculator. I opened the store day one and I had in my inventory when I opened the store from the prior year, 10,000 worth of calculators and each costing $10,000. So in terms of units and in terms of a dollar amount, they're the same because each calculator is a dollar. I'm keeping this example simple to illustrate the point. Therefore, my beginning inventory is 10,000 unit or $10,000. Great. Throughout the year, I made 
additional purchases and I purchased $50,000 worth of calculator which is $50,000 in calculators so each calculator costs me after discounts allowance and everything $1 so I purchased an additional $50,000 calculators each a dollar now if I take my beginning inventory plus my additional purchases I have $60,000 of worth of goods available for sale or 60,000 units because again each unit is a dollar keeping it simple what is going to happen by the end of the year well by the end of the year few things could happen well my calculators could be really the most advanced the most in demand calculators and I could have zero in ending inventory what does that mean it means I sold the 60,000 units that's that's one one option or the other option is calculators these calculators are out of styles and I still have 60,000 units it means I cost zero because I did not sell any of them what do you notice here well it's a zero-sum game. Whatever I have an ending inventory, it's in cost of goods sold. Whatever I have, an, I have in cost of goods sold, it's an ending inventory. It means if I have more an ending inventory, for any reason, if I have more an ending inventory, more of the 60,000, it takes away from cost of goods sold. The less I have an ending inventory, the assumption is it went to cost of goods sold. So let's work some realistic example, and let's assume I still have... 15,000 unit in ending inventory what does that mean it means my cost of goods sold is 45,000 because the 60,000 will have to be split between ending inventory and cost of goods sold so if I have 15,000 in ending inventory it means my cost of goods sold is 45,000 or I can take I can take the formula is take goods available for sale which is 60,000 and deduct count ending inventory to figure out so the 15,000 is you count to come up with 45,000 the point is this the point is this so if you want to write this down when you add up ending inventory and cost of goods sold it should equal to merchandise inventory or when you split merchandise inventory it has to be split between ending inventory and cost of goods sold because you had to split those two it means what it means if by any reason for any reason you gave more to ending inventory you take away from cost of goods sold let me show you this if I counted rather than 15,000 I counted 20,000 unit remaining 20,000 unit and in ending inventory it means my cost of goods sold is 40 if I counted only 5,000 unit and in ending inventory my cost of goods sold would be 55 so notice it's a zero-sum game there's an inverse relationship between ending inventory and cost of goods sold so please keep that in mind now what makes things even more complicated is this I I told you in this example that I purchased all the calculators for one dollar including my beginning units my beginning 10,000 units were purchased from the prior year at one dollar per unit now that's not really true in the real world in the real world you purchase calculators sometime at 95 cent sometime at 105 at 107 at 103 so the price of this calculator would change so as, as the price of this calculator would change if you have 15,000 unit remaining which 15,000 unit do you have do you have some of the some of the ones you purchase at 95 cent do you have some of the one you purchase at 103 do you have some of the ones you purchase at 105 so on and so forth I kept it simple just to illustrate this concept but to make it complicated if I change the price you would say okay I have 15,000 units there's no discussion about that but the question is which 15,000 unit do I have left the one at a dollar dollar oh three ninety seven pennies so on and so forth so what would companies do companies they have to figure out an inventory costing method what does that mean it means they have to make certain assumptions on how the calculators are being sold well they can say 
the calculators that we purchased first are being sold first. So they can use this assumption, first in, first out. So they can work in order. The first units we purchased are the first unit we sold. Or they can assume last in, first out, which is the opposite. They're going to assume the last, and this is assumption, assume. Notice what I said, assume. They're going to assume the last units they purchased are the first unit they are selling. Or to solve the problem, they're going to compute a weighted average. They're going to compute what's the weighted average per one calculator and use that. Or they can track each calculator separately. And as they sell that calculator, they would say we sold this specific calculator. There are more than one method to cost your inventory. Why? Because what the amount you assign to inventory would influence the amount you assign to cost of goods sold. Yes, we said we have 15,000 unit, but the question is at what price? And this is what becomes more complicated. Now to illustrate this concept is to work an example. So we're gonna work this example. We're gonna have this company where we are starting, and here you have to be very careful, be organized. We are starting beginning inventory September 1st. We have 12 units. Of, I don't care what we're selling you use your imagination we have 12 units of let's assume tables 12 tables we purchase we purchase each table at $85 so this is from the prior year we opened the store we have 12 tables on September 4th four days later we purchased notice here the activity 18 tables and we purchase each table at $95. Notice the prices are going up. Now we have 30 tables, 12 plus 18. We sold on September 10th, 15 tables. We sold 15 tables. If we sold 15 tables, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have remaining 15 tables, 15 units. On September 15th, we purchased 22 tables. So we purchased 22, we already have 15, we're up to 37. September 20th, we purchased eight tables at 125. We went from 37 plus eight, we're at 45. Then we sold 20 tables. If we go from 45 minus 20 will give us 25 units. So this is the chronological order of the transactions. Now, all in all, here's what happened. All in all, we sold, uh, we have, we had 60 units available. Why? We started with 12 plus 18 plus 22 plus 8. So 12 plus 18 plus 22 plus 8. We had 60 units available for sale. Of those 60 units, we sold 35. Obviously, of the 60, if we sold 35, what's left is 25. Usually in the real world, you would say, let me count how much I have left. And if I have 60 available minus 25, the units sold must be 35. I am going to illustrate the concept first using the FIFO method. So under FIFO, I'm going to be analyzing those transactions to determine what will be your ending inventory and what, we, what will be your cost of goods sold. September 1st, I started with 12 units at 85. Well, September 1st, I have a cost of goods sold column and inventory balance column. 12 units at 85. Nothing about it. September 4th, I made a purchase. I purchased 18 units at 95. Here's what I would do. September 4th, I purchased 18 units at 95. Now, here's what I want you to make sure you understand. You have 30 units. However, you have two 30 units. You have two 30 units. I'm sorry, two batches that add up to 30 units. You have 12 units at 85 and 18 units at 95. And the 12 units are before they came first. Why did they came first? Because I had them since September 1st. And the 18 units are next. So you have to keep them in chronological order in the date in which they are purchased first. Six days later, notice here, I made a sale. We made a sale. We sold 15 units. Now, which 15 units we sold? Here we have to be careful. If I'm using FIFO, which 15 units I sold? Well, FIFO means I'm starting from the beginning. So to fill this order, I have to get rid of those 12 units. 
and get rid of three from here so if I get rid of three what's left is 15 units at 95 so so under my cost of goods sold I sold those 12 units at 85 those are gone the cost of those is 1020 and I sold three units from the 95 so the, under this column here I keep track of the cost of goods sold which is 1020 and 285 so this is the cost of goods sold and I sold them at 120 it doesn't really matter this is my selling price now what do I have left in my inventory I told you what I have left is those 12 units are gone because they went to here and they are sold and I sold three units of the 18 remember I had 18 I sold three what's left is 15 now I have 15 units remaining at 95 September the 10th I purchased 20 units 22 units at 110 September I'm sorry September the 15th I purchased 20 units at 110 I'm gonna bring down the 15 units at 95 and I have 20 units at 110 my total inventory is 3845 on September 20th I made another purchase I purchased 8 units at 125 what do I do I am going to bring the 15 units at 95 in other words keep my inventory up to date the 22 units at 110 and I have eight units at 125 all my inventory in total is 4845 September 25th I sold 20 units which 20 units I am going to sell because this is my ending this is my inventory this is my inventory right here let me highlight my inventory in yellow which 20 units I sold well which method am I using FIFO so if, if I'm gonna be selling 20 units first I'm gonna get rid of this 15 and I'm gonna sell five of those okay so it's gonna be 15 out of out of uh, the, the one at 95 so this batch is gone and I'm gonna sell five out of the 110 5 out of 110 if I sold 5 out of the 110 what's left is 17 at 110 and the 8 units are you know we haven't sold them 8 units at 125 now th the month has ended what do I have well I have 17 plus 8 I have 25 units and what's the total 20 28 70 so I have 20 25 units left at 2870 now what's my cost of goods sold my cost of goods sold as I kept track of it it's 1020 285 1425 and 1550 I added I add it all up and it will add up to 3280 and it's 35 units remember what did I start with I started with 60 units and I told you 35 units are sold 25 units are left now we assign the dollar amount if we assign the dollar amount and we add cost of goods sold plus ending inventory they will add up to this magic number 6150 remember what I told you about this magic number you're gonna see it again and again so under the FIFO method our cost of goods sold is 3280 our ending inventory is 2870 now why would the company use the FIFO method first and first out well remember this is an assumption it doesn't mean they actually use it but it's an accounting method here are some advantages and disadvantages to the FIFO method the FIFO method actually reflect the actual flow of goods what does that mean in most businesses they want to sell the the first item first so they want to sell the per the items that they purchase first they want to sell it first so it actually reflect what's happening most of the time even if that's not happening you could still use it because it's a, just an assumption accurate inventory valuation if you are using first in first out it means the inventory that you purchase last is there it means you have a current number for inventory it means it's an accurate inventory valuation so your inventory number is is good now it's gonna give you higher profit in inflationary time what does that mean it means when prices are going up when prices are going up 
you are going to be matching old cost with new prices the old cost is lower because if there's inflation you're going to be increasing your prices so it's going to show you higher profit we're going to see this is a disadvantage at the same time so it's going to show you higher profit and you're going to see why it's a disadvantage too and it's simple first in first out it's easy to keep track of because it's first in first out that's the normal way the disadvantages one remember I told you higher profit higher profit would lead to higher tax liability so this is a disadvantage so FIFO is a disadvantage when prices are rising and generally speaking prices rise outdated costing matching what does that mean we said you are matching old cost with new prices so it's showing higher profit but it's it's outdated profitability and this is less realistic in deflationary period deflationary it's the opposite of inflation so you're going to have lower profit during periods of falling prices as older higher costs are matched against lower revenue so when prices are going down you have to lower your cost and FIFO will be a disadvantage because it's showing you lower profit because you have to lower your prices because it's a deflation and the old prices are higher now let's take a look at LIFO LIFO last and first out we're gonna work the same example hopefully you, you are getting familiar with the numbers selling these tables but it's LIFO we're starting with 12 units at 85 we purchased 18 units at 95 now we have 12 units at 85 18 units at 95 total inventory 2730 now we sold 15 units which 15 units did we sell which method are we using LIFO last in first out it means we're going to be selling the 15 out of the 18 so the 15 units are sold from the $95 batch which will give us a cost of $14.95 what's left in ending inventory the 12 units are still here and of the 18 we still have three units remaining September 15th we purchased 22 units at 110 we purchased 22 units at 110 now we have three layers of inventory the 12 at 85 the 3 at 95 and this is the new one the $22 at 110 September 20th we purchased eight units at 125 now we have 1285 395 we're bringing down and 2210 would bring in down and now we have a new layer at eight units at 125 now we have four layers of inventory four different batches or four layers layers because kind of think you are putting them on the top of each other by time now you sold 20 units which 20 units you sold well which 20 units I sold are the 20 units that I purchased last well to fill out the order I'm gonna take those eight minus eight I'm gonna still have left and I'm gonna sell 12 of those if I sell 12 of those what's gonna be remaining of the 110 is 10 so so I sold the eight at 125 this is the cost of those units I sold the 12 units at 110 so this is my cost of sale this is my cost of sale the thousand and the 1320 what's left is this what's left is my 12 units at 85 the three units at 95 the 10 units I used to have 22 I still have 10 units at 110 now I'm ready to compute my ending inventory my ending inventory is those three batches 12 at 85 3 at 95 and 10 at 110 if I add up the units the units add up to 25 units and the ending inventory if I add up if I take 12 times 85 plus 3 times 95 plus 10 times 110 it's gonna give me 2405 this is incorrect it's gonna give me 2405 this is my ending inventory if I add up my cost of sales which is 1425 1000 and 1320 they add up to 3400 3745 when I add them both up cost of goods sold and ending inventory they add up to my magic number 6150 remember that magic number that does not change and the units does not change remember the 60 the 60 units 35 sold 25 remained but now I'm giving them a different figure using LIFO assuming I'm using LIFO now what are the advantages and disadvantages of LIFO advantages 
tax benefit during inflationary time you have lower profit you have lower profit lower profit during inflation and this means lower taxes so if you're using LIFO you pay less taxes if prices are going up better matching of current cost to revenue why because if you are matching last cost to last revenue they should be reflective of what's happening because your cost is recent your revenue is recent it's better matching disadvantages of LIFO lower ending inventory inventory because you your inventory is old your inventory is old and if prices are going up it's gonna show lower inventory figure it's a non-compliance with IFRS if you are using IFRS it doesn't work potential inventory liquidation issues which we'll talk about those later on don't worry about this liquidation issue if your course is covering it I will cover it for you but don't worry about this it create complication it's complex Okay, record keeping and inventory management can be more complex because you need to keep track of different layers of inventory. It's way harder than FIFO. Now, later on in your advanced accounting classes, there's much, much more to talk about LIFO. But this is how LIFO works. We're going to move from LIFO to the weighted average perpetual method. What's the weighted average? It's an average and that average is moving as you are making new purchases so every new purchase we're gonna have a new average cost so we're gonna start with September 1st you have 85 units at 12 what's the average cost if we take 1020 divided by 12 units the average cost is 85 nothing too average yet then September 4th we made a new purchase we purchased 18 units at 95 and we paid 1710 now what is our dollar amount well if we started with 1020 then we made a purchase of 1710 our total inventory is 2730 and now we have 30 units we'll divide this by 30 units because we have 12 plus 18 our average cost is 91 dollars this is the weighted average so the average cost is $81 because we have $2730 in total dollar amount and we have 30 units available now the average cost is $91 first of all a few things I want to make sure you understand from the average the average cost must be between 85 and 95 so 91 in between but don't take 85 plus 95 divided by 2 this is the weighted average it should be closer to 95 because we have more units at 95 so just FYI to double check yourself now this is my new average now when I sold the 15 units I don't care which 15 units I sold I'm gonna say I sold the 15 units from the weighted average cost of 91 so the cost of goods sold is at 91 therefore my cost of sales is 1365 if I sold 15 I still have 15 because I had last 30 again I'm gonna keep my average unit at 91 until I make a new purchase on September 15th I purchased 20 22 units at 110 and I invested in my inventory 2420 now I have 2420 plus 1365 in total I have three thousand seven hundred and eighty five dollars and the number of units I had 15 and I purchased 22 I have 37 units if I take the dollar amount divided by the 37 units I'm going to have a new average of 102.30 notice my average is going up because the cost of inventory is going up therefore my new average is 102.30 my new average cost on September 20th I purchased eight units at 125 I and I invested an additional 1000 what do I need to do compute a new average well I had 3700 and $85 invested I invested an additional thousand now I have four thousand seven hundred and eighty five and I'm gonna divide this rather by 37 plus 8 I'm gonna divide this by 45 units and that's gonna give me 
106.33. My new average cost is 106.33. So every time I make a new purchase, I compute a new average cost. I sold 20 units. Well, which 20 units I sold? I really don't care which 20 units I sold. I know I have 45 units. If I sold 20, I should have 25 left. And the 20, I'm going to be using the latest average cost to compute my cost of goods sold, which happens to be 106.33. My cost of goods sold for this sale is $2,126.60. I still have 25 units available at $2,658.40. Now, let's take a look. I have 35 units sold, 35 units sold, and my total cost is 1365 plus 2126, which is 3491. I still have 20 units sold, 20 units remaining at $2,658.40. Remember, 60 in total, 35 sold. 25 remaining and if I add the dollar amount of cost of goods sold plus ending inventory it's going to take me back to that magic number which is 6150 and I told you to take a note of this so the 6150 this goods available for sale is split between ending inventory and cost of goods sold now what are the advantages and disadvantages of the weighted average perpetual method smooth price fluctuation because averages gives you an average smooth simplify inventory valuation if I'm using the average I'm using the average cost and consistent cost allocation I'm always using the average it doesn't matter it's good now what are the disadvantages yes the average is good however if the prices are fluctuating a lot the average is less accurate so if the prices are going up and down very quickly and you're computing the average the average is not a reflection of what's happening this gives us a potential for inventory cost distortion. So if the prices are moving a lot, it's more complex than something we call the periodic average. Periodic average is another average, but it's not perpetual. Remember, we have a periodic inventory and perpetual. The periodic is much simpler. But you don't know until we look at the periodic inventory method. Now let's take a look at the fourth method, which is the specific method. And the specific method, in my opinion, the specific method is the simplest method to learn, but I'm not really sure why students find it the most difficult to understand. In the specific method, they either have to give you one of two things. Which units you sold or which units left. So have, they have to tell you which units you sold or which units you have left. So in this example, remember we're starting with 60 units. Not six, we're not starting with 60. We had 60 units available for sale. 35 sold. 35 units sold. And 25 units remain or left. Now, in order to solve the specific method, they have to give you one of two things. Which units you sold. So if they tell you which 35 units you sold, you can take them out and you know what remains. Or they tell you which 25 units remaining, therefore you know which units you are sold. Now for the purpose of this example, I'm going to walk you through it and tell you we sold this unit and we have these remaining. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna have to tell you, step by step. We started with 12 units at 85, great. We purchased 18 units at 95, great. We have 12 at 85, 18 at 95. September 10th, we sold 15 units. Remember, we sold 15 units. I'm going to tell you which one we sold. We sold the 12 at 85 and 3 of the 95. It looks like we're using FIFO, but we're not. Okay? So, if we sold 3 of those, of those 95, we still have 15 at 95. Then we made a purchase. We made two purchases. 22 units at 110 and 8 units at 125. So now we have 15 at 95, 22 units at 110, and 8, 8 at 125. Great. So this is now the inventory that we have. Three batch, three different batches. September 25th, we sold 20 units. Now they have to tell us which 20 units. They have to tell you, otherwise you cannot solve this problem or they tell you what remains, but I'm going to tell you which unit you sold. 
of the 15 at 95 you sold five of those so if you sold five of those you still have 10 at 95 so this is the ending inventory now you sold the 15 units at 110 so if you sold 15 of those you still have seven so you have seven at 110 and 15 were sold then the eight units you have left you have left now we are ready to compute our our cost of goods sold and ending inventory so if we computed our ending inventory our ending inventory and cost of sales here's what's going to happen let's start with ending inventory ending inventory we have 10 at 95 7 at 110 and 8 at 125 our ending inventory is 2720 and our cost of goods sold just 1020 plus 285 plus 475 plus 1650 well if we add up cost of goods sold it would add up to 3430 and ending inventory is 2720 again they add up to 6150 what's 6150 that magic number goods available for sale for example in this problem here's all what I have to tell you in this problem I can tell you what's giving remember the giving was this information the giving was this you remember this table here and here's what I'm I, here's what they would tell you they will give you this table and they will tell you this they will tell you after they give you what's giving they will tell you your remaining inventory is the following 10 units at that's that's not a good highlighter here 10 units at 95 7 units at 110 and 8 units at 125 and they'll give you the table so what do you do if they did this you just kind of say this is my ending inventory and everything else I cost and that's it what's left 12 at the 12 at 85 3 at 95 5 at 95 15 at 110 that's it or what they will tell you or what they will tell you in this problem they will tell you you sold the 12 units at 85 3 units at 95 5 units at 95 and 15 units at 110 so if they told you, you sold those it means you have those left over so they have to give you either what you sold which specific units you sold or which specific units you have left otherwise the specific method does you cannot solve it you have to be either given either or and well based on my logic if I'm giving the ending and the ending is 2720 and I know everything should be 6150 cost of goods sold is 3430 if I'm giving cost of goods sold info and I know the total needs to be 6150 take 6150 minus 3430 you will get to the ending inventory now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the specific method starting with the advantages it's accurate matching of cost with revenue because you are selecting the specific item to match it with revenue so you're identifying specifically which one you sold detailed inventory tracking you are being more accurate detailed because you are tracking each unit separately now who uses the specific method the specific method is very expensive Th that's a disadvantage of it we're gonna see this you use it when you have items that you could easily identify tag it minimizes the risk of inventory errors because you are matching each unit separately it reflects the true inventory value because if you sold those specific units what's left is the true inventory that you have left disadvantages complex and time consuming and because it's complex and time consuming it is costly it's very costly because you are tracking each units separately it's very hard if you have a high volume if you're selling a lot of the same item you cannot keep track if you have a high volume if you're selling chewing gum if you're selling chocolate bars you're gonna selling a lot of those you cannot keep track of each gum separately or each box or each unit so if you're having low cost high volume items it's not practical to use it and it could be potential for manipulation although you're identifying you can on the record identify the one that match what you want to do whether you want to increase or reduce profit and obviously as I mentioned it's complex and time-consuming and as a result if it's complex and time-consuming it's a higher administrative cost now the best way to look at the big picture is to take a look at the effect on the bottom line for these methods so first let me show you where I get the sales from remember when I started this problem 
we, we are told we sold 15 units at 120 and 20 units at 135. This is the selling. So our total sales, so we're looking at an income statement for this company, fictitious income statement. Let me go to the financial statement. So the total sales does not change when it comes to FIFO, LIFO weighted average. So this is a sa the sample company. So the total sales is 4,500 for all methods. Now, cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, it's going to be different for each method. And we already computed this. For the specific method, cost of goods sold was 3430. Gross profit was 1,070. We have 400 of operating expenses, gave us 670 income before taxes. Tax rate is 21%. Net income is 529. Under FIFO, we subtracted 3280 of cost of goods sold. 1020 is gross profit and net income is 648. Under LIFO, 4500 is the sale, which is the same minus a different cost of goods sold of 37.45 gross profit as 755 after we deducted everything our net income is 280 weighted average cost of goods sold is 34.92 and profit is 481 so this is the income statement figures now which method yielded the lowest profit notice lifo gave us the lowest profit, 280. Although sales is the same for all four method. Now, why? The reason why, because prices, if you notice, prices were going up. If prices were going up and we are matching recent costs with recent prices, our cost of goods sold will be the highest. It means our gross profit will be the lowest. It means our income before taxes will be the lowest. It means we pay the lowest taxes. Notice also in, in terms of taxes, we only paid $75 versus 128 versus 172 versus 141. So if you are the owner of the business, if you are the owner of the business, you choose. You would like to choose LIFO, uh, LIFO because LIFO gives you the, the lowest, the lowest, the lowest profit. Okay, that's LIFO, 280. The opposite, which one has the highest profit? FIFO, 648. Why? Because FIFO is giving you the lowest cost of goods sold. Why the lowest? Because you are matching your recent cost with old inventory. And the older the inventory it was, the cheaper it was. Therefore, gives you a lower cost, a higher profit. Obviously, this, the weighted average, it's an average, it should be in between. And the specific identification, it's specifically identifying the inventory. Now, if you are the manager, you want to use FIFO because you want to show the highest profit. I'm sorry, the highest profit, the highest profit, the highest profit. Why? Because you want to look profitable as a company. You would use FIFO. Now, in the real world, what do they use? They might use FIFO for internal, LIFO for external. But remember, LIFO create other issues. We'll talk about those later. From an inventory perspective, FIFO is showing you the highest inventory because it's a it's the recent inventory. LIFO is showing you the lowest because the inventory is old. And in this example, we're assuming prices are rising. We have inflation. If we have inflation, this is what happened. Your inventory is is old it's going to be low the inventory is low and for fifo the inventory is recent the inventory is high obviously the opposite is true during the opposite time where prices which is deflation if prices are going down one thing you want to know about lifo there's a lifo conformity rule conformity rule and what does that mean this deals with taxes if a company elects to use lifo for taxable income it will benefit from potentially lower taxes and period of inflation because LIFO matches recent higher cost against current revenue, resulting in higher cost of goods sold and lower taxable income. And this is what this example shows us. This is what this example shows us. This, this example shows us we have a higher cost, lower profit, and lower taxes. We paid the least amount of taxes. That's fine. But here's what the LIFO conformity rules state. If you are using LIFO, for taxes, that's a great. If you want to save on your taxes, we're okay with this. 
you have to use LIFO for GAAP, for financial accounting. The same company must also use LIFO for its financial statement. This means higher cost of goods sold for tax purposes will also reflect in the financial statement, potentially showing lower gross profit and net income. So if you want to save taxes, that's fine. But if you use LIFO, you also have to use it for your financial statement. So you're kind of stuck with LIFO. Why? Because you cannot have the best of both worlds. Again, LIFO, there are more complications to LIFO. Um, in advanced courses, you would learn about those many, many other complications. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. In a period of rising prices, and this is the normal thing, prices rise, the method result in the lowest net income. Which method gives you the lowest, the lowest profit? Well, the method that's going to give you the lowest profit is the method that's going to give you the highest cost of goods sold. Which method gives you the highest cost of goods sold if prices are rising? So if prices are rising, here's what I would do. I would say the prices are rising. One, two, three, four. Prices are rising. And I sold something for $6. This is how much I sold the item for. If I sold it for six, and this is my cost, I have a cost for one, two, three, four. If I want to yield the lowest income, I want to match it with the recent cost. Minus four will give me two dollar of gross profit. So using LIFO, matching my most recent cost with the sale will give you the lowest gross profit. It means the answer is LIFO. And this is some of the questions you have to deal with as you are dealing with with the CPA exam. It's what? It's dealing with rising prices or reducing prices. What's the effect of those on what? On FIFO, LIFO, your bottom line, your taxes. What should you do now? You wanna go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, additional, additional resources, additional multiple choice questions. That's gonna help you whether you are studying for your CPA exam or studying for your CMA, financial accounting, so on and so forth. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.